ever read a self-help book? Did it do anything good for you? <laughs> so, so <laughs> I am a self-prescribed self-help addict in recovery, thankfully. <laughs> and when I saw this article at the back of the current month of Toastmaster Magazine, Help Yourself, Self-Help Books, Help Who? by John Cadley, who is a freelance writer and musician and a former advertising copywriter. I started laughing out loud and my husband was a bit startled, looked at me kind of funny, and then went back to watching TV because he knows I'm a little nuts. <laughs> when I stopped laughing, I started thinking, how much money and time have I devoted in my life to this self-help stuff. And then I really started thinking about how much emotional energy I had devoted to self-help. Hi, I'm Jennifer Miller, and I'm a self-help addict. <laughs> Hi, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> I keep my stash by my bedside on a nightstand. I've spent hours and hours reading self-help books that make me feel good momentarily and then I end up feeling like garbage because it's hard to put all those things into effect and actually do them once you finish the book. <laughs> so I ended up feeling really bad about myself instead of getting any better. On weekends, you find me in Barnes and Nobles looking for my next fix <laughs> <laughs> on the bookshelves. <laughs> I'm really sad and sorry. This is actually one of the books that I read at one point. <laughs> <laughs> this is a real book. And the funny thing is, is on the cover, it says, this book will change your life forever. Guess who wrote that quote? The guy who wrote all the chicken soup books. <laughs> so, the self-help gurus help each other. But I found my way out. And what I found when I was all done is that I'm really no different at my core than the person I was before I started all this self-help reading. And a lot of it, if you stop and think about it for a second, is kind of common sense. But what they prescribe is this complete human makeover. And I don't know about you, but I'm more worried about the people who seem real normal <laughs> and real put together all the time than I am about the rest of us. I wonder if they're not the people who are doing the things behind the scenes that make all the rest of us crazy. I never needed it before I started reading it. And I think that's kind of says a lot about what self-help is. And I'm not going to say that anybody who's helped by it is wrong, but this is just my opinion that it didn't make me a better person. It made me a more worried person. <laughs> because I was sitting around thinking all the time about how I was not some perfect specimen of a human being who could eat five servings of fruits and vegetables every day without fail, meditate every day for at least 15 to 20 minutes, keep a gratitude journal where there was never a day missed, love my inner child and follow my passion and always be enthusiastic about everything that was going on in my life. I tend to be more of a couch potato and I think I'm going to just embrace that for now. <laughs> but I think what happened was generations ago people were just trying so hard to survive that Things like self-help just weren't necessary. 
because there wasn't a lot of thinking involved out there. There was surviving. Now that we aren't all struggling to survive day in and day out, we're spending too much time thinking. Now, thinking isn't necessarily bad. I mean, that's what has created the technology that's propelled us forward, and healthcare that's kept us all healthier. But if you think about it, we're thinking a lot about things that were never a problem before, and now all of a sudden they are. So my advice is to live it up, be a mess, fly your free flag, be kind to yourself, and be kind to the rest of us. <laughs>